Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to you. You're watching another episode of Encounter. In the program today, we have Vimi Apadu, the founder of Dale Carnegie in Mauritius. She's also the managing director and a coach. Vimi, a very warm welcome to you in the studios of the NBC. And thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Vimi, before I ask you what is Dale Carnegie, what do you do? Um, there's something that we all know in Mauritius that... Uh, Mauritius is known for its tourism, it's known for its sugarcane, but Mauritius is also known for its human capital. And Dale Carnegie is massively involved in the training of people, in, people working in big organizations in Mauritius. And this is a, more or less a well-known brand around, around the world. Is it the same thing for Mauritius? Well, thank you for saying that. Indeed, uh, we are lucky enough that in Mauritius, we do work with most of the large uh, groups of companies and we do work with the top 100 companies because uh, I suppose it is becoming more and more uh, predominant that they need to invest in the human capital. So we are grateful for that. We do work with them. Uh, from the many years, can you tell us how many years has Dale Carnegie been president in Mauritius? Well, I've personally been uh, with Dale Carnegie for the last 20 years, so we've been here for 20 years. So that's quite some history. <laughs> and uh, from the 20 years of experience that you've gathered, uh, one of the major problems that organizations face nowadays is the human capital, and more precisely is the attitude of employees towards their work. Is, is that a real thing? Mm -hmm. Funny you should say that because only last year we conducted in Mauritius a survey on employee engagement which is about the commitment and the dedication that people have for their organization. And unfortunately the level of engagement is not as much as it should be, especially when we are talking about those sectors, be it tourism, be it uh, the banking sector, the financial sector, it's all about human capital in Mauritius. So if we are thinking that we've got people who are not engaged and yet we are counting on them for the development and the progression and the growth of the Mauritian economy, so I guess we need to really sit down and revisit what we are doing. So at the end of the day, even if organizations and companies are carrying out trainings for their staff, how the individuals who receive the training put it into practice and hopefully develop their, their growth by themselves. And if you have a group of people who take it all, this is where you will see the, the, the change in the company. Yeah. So it comes down to the personal development of people. Absolutely. Um, we've got what we call a cycle of self-development, a cycle of improvement. Um, it's like, you know, if we take an example of somebody who wants to learn how to drive, uh, fine, you go and you get your driving license and fantastic, I don't know how many times you've gone through the test and you finally get your driving license. But if you do not practice the driving, I don't think you would want to travel with somebody who only on paper has got a driving license. That would be scary. Very scary. <laughs> <laughs> Neither would I. So in the same way, uh, just being given the training, the concepts, the tools and everything, doesn't make, somebody cannot just say, you know what, that's it, I've done my personal development. So the practice part that you're saying is critical and crucial to adopt that habit. So it becomes a habit after some time. So you give the required tools to individuals working in organizations to improve their contribution towards the, their work. But at the end of the day, if I may say, please correct mm -hmm. me if I'm please wrong, do. if they are able to improve their contribution towards their work, it also means that they are improving their own personality. So uh, tell us a bit more about what are the programs you have? How do you work around this and helping people to improve their personality? Um, the, the analogy I will use is like any human beings, I mean, thank God, we've got two legs. Yeah. So at no point in time can anybody say, you know what, I'm going to spend the rest of my day on my left foot. It doesn't work. We take a balance, so we shift from one to the other. In the same way, one could be the professional development and the other one the personal development, but they do go hand in hand. Because automatically, let me give you an example. Today we are saying that uh, people need to learn about critical thinking. 
Yes. Which is at critical in an environment of work. Now, critical thinking, I use that for sure for decision making in the working place. But I can also use the same concept in my working environment. I've got to build a house, I've got to get married, I've got to whatever. It's in the same way. So whatever I will use from that development that I will get from a professional perspective, automatically it will help me in my personal growth as well, but only if I am willing to put it into action. So how do you help people in general? What are the courses that are on offer? And uh, I'm sure you've had many programs over the years, but what are the main ones that are applicable to Mauritius? Indeed, most of them would be applicable to Mauritius. The one that is, I mean, you must have heard of somebody like Warren Buffett. Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, Warren Buffett is one of our main ambassadors around the world because even today, Warren Buffett, in his office, he only has the Dale Carnegie course certificate. Uh, the reason being that that's the program that enabled him to build the foundation for his success. And very recently in an interview, he said, that's the best investment that I ever made. From an investment guru who says that means a lot. So that's the program that we are cascading down a lot in large organizations in Mauritius. And the reason why it's replicating in large organizations is because they are seeing the results in terms of people being... Uh, more uh, self-confident, communicating more with impact, and having a different attitude. You mentioned attitude earlier on. Th that is a big area where we help people. We help people change that mindset. So what, is, what do you have to go through when you undertake the course? How long is it? Uh... Normally the program are time phased yeah. because to develop a habit, it's not overnight that we develop a habit. But it's also from organization to organization, I'm guessing. So it's a little bit tailor-made for each organization, right? Yeah. It, it's tailor-made towards the, the requirements, specific yeah. needs of... Uh, so let's say, for instance, uh, an organization can say, okay, we've got an issue with the new generation coming in and there's a clash <laughs> or whatever it is. Okay, so that's tailor-made towards that. But coming back to how it's, 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 uh, it's mapped out and rolled out, it's more of a time-phased approach because to develop a habit, we need practice and we need coaching that goes with that. And there's a story that comes to my mind is I had a friend who was practicing golf. And, you know, he was doing his swing and thinking that he was very good at it until suddenly somebody watched him and told him that if only he would tweak slightly his move, he would have a better swing. Now, he was practicing, yes but he was practicing without coaching or with the wrong coaching. So when we have practice with the right coaching, then we develop the habit. What are the main issues that uh, you have seen over the years? Um, two things that are happening. Currently, uh, that is making our working environment so dynamic and at the same time challenging. One is... It is said, and it is true even for Mauritius, that this is the first time that in a working environment we are faced with four generations. Yes. And we, we, nobody has ever seen that. Um, several reasons, people are working until the age of 65, people are entering the workplace earlier than before, so we now have four generations. So how do you cope with one generation that has been brought up whereby he didn't even have a say if there was a TV to be changed at home. To a generation now where to build a house, to travel somewhere, the kids are involved in the decision making. All right. So that is the challenge that leaders are facing today. That's one. Second is because of the upbringing and the ecosystem in which the last two generations have evolved, their expectations are different. Uh, I was talking to a company only yesterday, and one of the things that they couldn't understand was involving people in decision-making. Uh, and that's one ex expectation that people have. So this is the challenge that is resulting in problems of communication, engagement, attitude, and which we are in a learning phase, and that's how we help organizations to bridge those gaps. This is uh, people in the work environment. How about on a personal level? 
and how can we address this, uh, this issue? Um, it, it's back again to a change in attitude. And I was thinking the other day, you know, it's like a tree. I don't know, you might have a tree. I mean, we had a lychee tree in our garden at one yeah. point. And always towards October, November, we would look at the tree and say, don't think we'll have any lychees this year. But at no point during the year have we been undertaking any action to make sure that round about October, November, that tree would give lychees. So individuals are, from my 20 years of experience, individuals are having slowly this shift of saying, I cannot expect the results to happen if I'm not taking any action for it. And I must say one good news that we are seeing, because we are present globally, and when I talk to my other colleagues in other countries, in other countries, like even South Africa, which is only next door to us, yep. people invest in their personal development. This wasn't the case uh, in Mauritius 20 years ago, definitely. Now we see it, that youngsters, even people who've got MBAs or whatever, they realize, you know what, soft skills is critical and they are now investing in it. In it. So personal development is slowly, hopefully, surely having its place in our uh, environment. Is it safe to say that personal development is equal to a leadership development? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. I'll just add one word before the leadership. I would say personal development equals self-leadership development. Self-leadership development. Yep. And I'll tell you why I say that. The personal development is what? Is I'm investing in myself. 100%. Right. It's I'm shifting from saying, you know, I've got to be a better communicator so that I can lead my team. That yep. is going towards externally. Whereas when I'm investing in myself is I'm investing in myself to be probably more uh, self-motivated, self-confident, self-aware, higher self-esteem. So because I have all those elements, I'm going to be able to lead myself as an individual. So that's why I would add the self-leadership. Self-leadership, which then leads into hopefully being leaders after yes, around the because workplace. Because you cannot lead others if you cannot lead yourself. Well, you need to be an inspiration to be a leader. Without followers, you're not a leader. Absolutely. <laughs> so nobody will follow anyone who's, you know, who's demonstrating or depicting the wrong values. And therefore, we need to consolidate that inner self. Once we've consolidated that inner self, then we become like a magnet. Automatically, other people will, will want to follow us. You mentioned earlier that it's the first time that there are four generations together at the workplace. How has the courses evolved over the last 20 years? Uh, you mean as in our program? Yes. Okay. So in fact, you must have heard of the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, which is one of the bestsellers, which is up. Most of our programs are based around the book. In fact, um, Four or five years ago, uh, there was a new edition that came out, which is how to win friends and influence people in the digital age. All right. Right. So it has been revamped, bearing into consideration that we are now in a digital, digital age. World. And we are now talking about artificial intelligence, and that's going to be the next phase. So in the digital age, for instance, communication has changed enormously. Uh, you've got one generation that feels very comfortable having a WhatsApp group, and We'll chat, and that's fine. Yeah. But you've got at the other continuum, probably those people sitting at the board level, people sitting at the executive committee level. I mean, you know what? Face-to-face -face communication cannot re replace the, what's, the WhatsApp. So then there is the clash. So a, a lot of organization are, tells us, if we're dealing with those people at that level, they will tell us, oh, but these guys need to understand. And the other ones will say the other but ones these have guys to need to understand. So then. If we are not prepared, and that's where the practice and the coaching comes in, if each one, we are not prepared to accommodate a, a little bit of, and, and be a little bit more agile, and that's why today we also talk about agile leadership. What would be the first advice you would give to someone who wants to improve their commitment on a personal level, which will also reflect uh, onto their work? Start with, what, what are your USPs today? 
We USB talk about unique selling, selling proposition in a company, in a product, in whatever. What is your individual unique selling proposition? What is it that makes you unique compared to other people? So trying to know how you stand out helps you know yourself better. Yes. That's the psyche behind it. Yes. Somebody who says, I have this ability to organize things detail, spot on, and with the results. Yes. Now that then makes that person focus on where he's so good at. Yes. Others are not that good at that. From there, that's a competence. That's a strength. Very much, which then moves on to, okay, with that strength and that competence, what can I do, where can I go? If it doesn't match that, I'm going to be so miserable as an individual. If you ask me to do something that I'm not good at, that's one. Second thing is, what is a value that is non-negotiable for you? What does that mean? So for instance, what is a value that as soon as you see that depicting in an environment, you're going to say, Rashan, this is not for you, move away. I'll tell you, I've been in a situation where, for me, respect for the other person is non-negotiable. That's not even a question. Okay. <laughs> I was working in an environment once, and I was at the management level, and this new GM comes in and holds the, uh, the meeting, and then uh, starts in a very undermining way, um, having uh, a, a, an aggressive behavior towards one of our, my colleagues. Because he's the boss. Uh, he's not the, yeah, he's not the leader. So that's the, the other difference. So then <laughs> I thought to myself, hang on, you know, will you, will you be okay in that environment? And I'll be honest, I stayed there. I'd been in that organization for quite a long time and I stayed there for a month and then I, I said, this is non-negotiable. Because if I stay in there, I would be very uncomfortable with myself because I would be saying to myself, Vimy, you are contributing to people not living this value, and then you say that's a value that you have. All right, so um, you have to identify what, are, what is your strength, but also try to work in an environment where you feel you're contributing positively, where you feel very comfortable. Yes, and it's aligned with your values. So do you think there's a big mismatch in Mauritius in terms of people working in environments that they're not happy? Okay. Uh, if I take your wonderful picture here, right? This is an ecosystem, yes. right? An ecosystem is where you'll have the birds, you'll have all different huge animals, and then you have the human beings coming in to water the plants, right? Now, even if you remove that watering by the human beings, you still have the rain. Of course. Right. And that's part of the ecosystem. So if an animal cannot live in, in that particular ecosystem, what does the animal do? It moves over to another place. Same way. So animals do it instinctively. We should learn from animals. Probably, you know what, we should. <laughs> we hang on and we say, yes, it will get better. But it doesn't necessarily. It's a choice to make. What you're saying is a person should carry out what I might call a SWOT analysis of himself? We, we call it a SCOT analysis. A SCOT. So it's strength, strength. challenges, yeah. not oh. weakness, because weakness has got a, a negative connotation to it. All so right. what are my strengths today? What are the challenges that I face today? Yeah. And what are the opportunities that are coming my way and I'm probably not seizing them? And what are those threats? Once you carry out a Scott analysis of yourself, I'm, I'm, I will try to get used to this, but uh, uh, what difference does it make then? To the individual? To the individual. So let's just imagine... Yeah. Not, not, on, not, on, not only on the physical aspect of knowing, but it goes way deeper into uh, the way of thinking of the person. Um, I've once carried out a SWOT analysis on myself. The thing is... Um, when you are aware of your uh, challenges and of the threats, you're somehow more okay with it. You accept it better. Mm. <laughs> and you, you're, you come to terms that you will have to work on it. Instead of fighting the flow, you go with the flow and it's like, okay, let me focus on my strength. I have, uh, I have challenges, but use the strength to come about the challenges also. 
So use the strength to overcome the challenges. Yes. But I just want to catch on that word that you said about we, I'm aware of it and then I become comfortable with it. Because once you're not able, if you're not aware of your uh, challenges, you're always in denial. Ah, right. You see, that's the, uh, this, this type of analysis is indeed to create the awareness. This is where I'm good at. This is what is not working for me. This is what's coming my way and I'm not seizing it. And this is what can come my way and be a roadblock. Now, that's the first phase. If now we come back to that developing the new habits. All right, bring it on. <laughs> right. So if we now come back to the new habit, we now shift into the next level, which is being mindful about it. All right. So I am aware does not mean I'm mindful. The mindfulness is, if I can say it, it's like you catch yourself. So I am aware, let's say my challenge is, I, uh, my challenge is I am not patient. Okay, right. So next time I'm aware that I'm not a, pa a patient person. Next time I catch myself not being patient. Yes. I say, Vimi, be careful. Step back, pull the plug, pull the plug. It's now, hard work to do this. Oh, yeah. That, that's, the, that's the personal difference. It will keep on happening, but the more it happens of you being aware, at some point you'll be able to pull back. Then you have a new habit. Then the first time you catch yourself halfway, the second time you catch yourself quarter of the way, and then eventually you get to the stage where you catch yourself in the mind. And even before it happens, you've changed it around. So this is how it becomes a habit. That's it. Is it true that you, uh, something become, becomes a habit after 21 days? <laughs> I've also been reading that. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, if you look at things like the Reiki and so on, that we've got the 21 days of cleansing yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. whatever. I mean, I've done that. I've seen how it works. Uh, but then probably we need more statistics to come and say that, you know, yes, 21 days practicing and that will uh, develop the habit. All right, now we have the millennials flooding the labor market. <laughs> And uh, this is probably a good thing, but also a challenge. Not using the word weakness again. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, is, how is Dale Carnegie ad adopting and adapting to the changes that are happening? Um, we do researches. Uh, Dale Carnegie um, and Associates in New York does researches every year. So we run about two or three research every year. The current one is on artificial intelligence. So we already way ahead. The one on engaging millennial was released in 2013. All right. Can you share a bit? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so basically, I'll tell you one of the things, for instance. It's because the values haven't changed. No. The values haven't changed. So that's the common line in the four generations. The issue is, Instead of looking at this new generation, and we've got to say this new generation is much more creative than any other generation. They ignore everything. <laughs> <laughs> so if we take those strengths from that generation and we plug that with the strength of the Generation X and then the baby boomers, I mean, we've got a good mix. So it's back to agility. It ba it's back to flexibility, and it's back to changing the attitude. Rather than saying, they are different. We used to be in our days. That's how we yeah, do things. Yeah, yeah. So you, you find a way for them to be complementary? That, that, that's the key of the game. That's the success to the game. And probably I should come to you for, for my Scott analysis. Please. <laughs> uh, you would recommend everyone to do one for themselves to start mm -hmm a good change in their, in, in their lives? Absolutely. The second step is to establish a personal vision for yourself. Where do you see yourself in the future? Yes. And when we say where do you see yourself, you see it and you feel it. So let's say somebody says December 2020. I see myself, but it needs to be with the feeling. You see it, you feel it, and then it will form part of you. And then whatever you will be doing on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, it's to get you 
today. So every action, every breath that you take will be towards what you want to do. As a song, every breath that you take. Did I just sing? <laughs> no, you just sing. <laughs> All right, yes, that, that, that makes sense. But it sounds very dreamy, though. Does uh, it work? Uh, listen, it has worked for millions of people around the world. So, uh, and it, it's continuing to work. And I must say, at one point, I remember when I started Dale Carnegie, and we were... Um, introducing this new way of personal development. Somebody said to me, but Vimy, you guys live in La La Land. Um, no, it's not La La Land. So can I say that you being at Dale Carnegie and representing it in Mauritius, you had already visualized it from before and this is exactly what you wanted to do? What I wanted to do, and this is where I jumped on this train, what I wanted to do was to give back to the society. And through Dale Carnegie and through inculcating new behaviors, new sets of behaviors in different generations, I'm able to do that. Oh, fantastic. And, and, and that's why I jumped on, on that wagon. Well, Vimya Badu, thank you very much uh, for spending time and uh, your knowledge with us on this program of My Encounter. Pleasure. It has been a pleasure having you. And uh, thank you very much. All the best with what you're doing and uh, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure, too. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the end of this episode of Encounter. Thank you very much for being with us. If you have any queries, questions, proposals, suggestions, or even people you would like to see on the program, drop an email. It is encounter at mbc.itnet.nu. Until the very next program, goodbye.